afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you're dialing in to listen to this webcast by HRO Today. This is an educational podcast as part of a series that we're doing. We're thrilled that this podcast series is being sponsored by Madison Performance, and we're going to talk about the current crisis, the coronavirus that you have heard so much about, COVID-19, disrupting the world economy, disrupting ongoing business, and really changing the way we all are interacting, both in our personal lives and for the purpose of this podcast, our professional lives. We're going to talk about what you can do with your workforce to maintain a sense of connectedness, to engage them, and to make them feel appreciated during a time of uncertainty and during a time when the way that we interact with them is being fundamentally changed in the short term and perhaps even in the long term. I'm Elliot Clark, the CEO of HRO Today magazine. We publish HR Today. We publish HR Today EMEA and APAC, and we're the producers of the HRO Today forums held around the world talking about HR strategy for senior HR officers. As I said, this podcast is being sponsored by Madison Performance Group, one of the global leaders in performance management, recognition, and reward programs. Madison Performance is one of the most highly rated recognition service providers on our HRO Today Baker's Dozen, and many years is the highest rated. They have an excellent ethos of customer service and great technology. We're joined today by Judd Weisgall, who is the Senior Vice President of Madison Performance. He's got more than 10 years in employee recognition and incentive industry, and he's focused a lot of his work uh, with clients on managing multi-generational workforces and technology. He's been part of the design and implementation of over 100 programs for the Fortune 500, and Judd has had, by the description, an action-packed career (laughs) that has afforded him the great opportunity to see many companies from various angles. He's also a great speaker, and we're thrilled to have him taking part in today's podcast and the podcast series. And Judd, this is going to be uh, action-packed, I'm sure, like the rest of your career, because we are all living with, uh, with changes in real time. Let me frame out, and I'll go to Judd in just a moment. We are experiencing a black swan event. By every definition that we use in the business world to describe an unanticipated event, this is it. There's no way anyone a month ago or say three months ago could have predicted that we'd all be locked in our houses trying to figure out how to engage our workforce, trying to figure out how to manage through the crisis. And in this black swan environment, the purpose of this podcast is HR and its outreach to your employees, your valued associates, is the white swan. Okay, so there we have nine questions. Each corresponds to a letter in white swan. And the white swan, if you believe Tchaikovsky, is the counterweight to the evil presence of a black swan. So I'm sort of mixing business metaphors and Russian ballet, but it works for the purposes of this podcast. HR has got to be part of the frontline group, in this case, the business community, that can be the heroes figure out how to help the associates get through the crisis and advise executives. So, Judd, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So, we're going to, in this first podcast, just address one question. And the question is, what is the essential role of recognition and its contribution in a period of uncertainty and crisis such as what we're in today? How can recognition be a source of comfort, strength, and engagement. Yeah, I I think it's so important to consider this always, but specifically at a time like this. And let me just say at the outset of this series, I'm an individual who believes in leading with gratitude. So I want to just express that gratitude today to you for this opportunity, to your staff, as well as to everyone listening out there. I know these are tough times, and I'm very hopeful that this series will be helpful to many, many of you. But I'm grateful for the time and energy that you're giving and sharing with us these questions. But Elliot, to your question of, you know, the role of recognition in a period of crisis and uncertainty, I believe it's to help maintain a few things, connection, performance, positivity. And to me, this is an unprecedented event, right? This black swan event, uh, as you've called it, it's unprecedented and it makes recognition indispensable. It is 
absolutely critical and vital at this time. So what I feel needs to happen is a few things. I think we need to focus on communication and connecting people, reviewing the tools that you have in hand with respect to reward and recognition, and thinking about the frequency with which you recognize as well. Folks are home. We are all home. Days are longer and lonelier and sometimes more difficult than when we're even commuting and dealing with the standard challenges that come with a typical workday, as opposed to this very atypical workdays that we experience now. So we have to use recognition as a social tool and unite during this time. So keep people focused on the core values of the organization, right? Let them know that they're not alone in this and communicate effectively to them what it is that they need to do, why it's important, and just how much it's appreciated. Simple, direct, always a classic way to approach it, except now we need to do it as often as possible. Now is not the time for service awards being the only thing that you do for your people. It just isn't. It can't be. In this very trying time, we need frequent touch points to alleviate our stress, lift up our spirits, and particularly when we're doing great things in a work-from-home atmosphere where we oftentimes feel unseen. So then you move to performance, right? Now, to some extent, when you remove oneself from the daily office life, it's a bit of a performance equalizer. Less personal bias that can be based on friendships and relationships allows leaders to focus on results more. It's pretty straightforward, but that's a fine thing. But we need to ensure that we have a stronger company on the other side of this crisis when we come out of this. And the only way to do so is to prop up, recognize, thank those who are doing above and beyond things in a time like this. We have to create performance-based milestones that are far more incremental, daily even, and push people along to their success by using reward and recognitions and incentives to drive these types of things. And then we have to stay positive. So important, so important. It's all the more important to use recognition, both monetary and e-card based, along with like social aspects if possible, such as audio and video. This will bring positive elements to the forefront. What great things are happening despite this climate within your organization? How is your organization helping? What individuals specifically, what, who's done great things, extraordinary things? And can you use your reward and recognition tool to bring people together, unite them, allow them to joyously communicate? Because in times like these, we're inundated by 24-7 negative news. And we need, we crave positivity. Your reward and recognition program is one tool in your toolbox that can do that. It can create an energy that along with the focus and performance I spoke about leads to synergy. And then that leads to the overall question here, which I believe the overall role of these programs in times like these, it's to be utilized to their maximum potential to do everything possible to maintain, support, and improve your culture. Now more than ever, We need to rethink the things that we haven't always, which all too often is reward and recognition. We have seen many take an approach of, if it's not broken, don't fix it. And to me, now absolutely is the time to ask, is it really not broken? Is it doing what we want? And more importantly, is it doing what we need to support and lift up and recognize our work heroes who are giving it their all, especially now? Is it? I ask that question directly. Is it working? Because if it's not, To me, that's the very role of recognition, and if it can't perform that vital role, if it's just being looked at as business as usual, that just won't work. So I think to answer your question, that's the vital role of recognition in a period of time and uncertainty is to lift everything up, and now's the time to do it. Well, it's certainly in unusual times, you've got to go with unusual approaches. And the question I think for our listeners is, and you've made a very good case, is this a lever? that you can pull harder than perhaps you would have pulled in other circumstances. And in Judd, before we, you know, end the podcast, can you give a real life example about how you're helping clients adapt their recognition program to the remote workforce, which is now virtually everyone globally in the developed world? So how do they adapt the recognition program? We, you know, you made an articulate case for why it's important. How are they adapting it to the remote workforce to make people, you know, sort of connect to the, to the business? Yeah, there's been lots of specialized 
almost like spiffs in a time like this. So we're seeing organizations that we partner with, some of our largest partners, doing different programs very quickly because they're able to react to it very quickly. Our team is able to implement very quickly. So examples being different programs that managers can use to recognize based on how folks within the organization are dealing with the COVID-19 impact. That might mean increased mentoring. That might mean localized heroes, people in their local communities or in their local warehouses or facilities that are going above and beyond. Maybe someone is knitting masks or using a 3D printer to build safety here. And while that may not be specifically related to the business line of performance, it's absolutely related to the culture line. And so we're seeing organizations come to us for very timely, specific program enhancements and different types of programs that are all related to the sort of tragedy and pandemic that we're all facing right now. And we're helping them evolve and recognize the great things that people are doing to overcome. Great. Well, thank you so much, Judd, for taking part in this first podcast. And as we said, this is HR as the white swan to counteract the negativity of a black swan event. So the first question was a W question. Please tune into the next podcast where we will get to the letter H. Once again, my thanks to Judd Weisgall, the Senior Vice President of Madison Performance Group, and by all means, click on the next podcast.